Good evening and welcome to you all to this service of evening prayer on Thursday the 25th of June. Hope you've been able to enjoy safely a bit of this sunshine that we've had today. I have to say I think it's affected my brains. I was at a chapter meeting online this afternoon and nobody could remember what day it was. And then when I sent my email out earlier on to everybody with the service sheet on, I forgot to attach the service sheet and all the information that people would need for the weekend. Um, so I probably need to go and have a bit of a lie down, I think, in a quiet evening uh, this evening. But anyway, hopefully we'll make it through evening prayer in one piece. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Song of God's Chosen One There shall come forth a shoot from the stock of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord he shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. For with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, the lion and the fatling together, with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm 61 You are my refuge, O God, strong tower against the enemy. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with fainting heart. O set me on the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent for ever, and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, will hear my vows. You will grant the request of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king that his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God for ever. May steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name and day by day fulfil my vows. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Risen Christ, as you knew the discipline of suffering, and the victory that brings us salvation. So grant us your presence in our weakness and a place in your unending kingdom, now and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. As today is an ordinary day, we return to our readings from the book of Job. Chapter 23 Then Job answered, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with, gar with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No, but he would give heed to me. There an upright person could reason with him, and I should be acquitted for ever by my judge. If I go forward, he is not there, or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. 
but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come out like gold. My foot has held fast to his steps. I have kept his way and have not turned aside. I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured in my bosom the words of his mouth, but he stands alone and who can dissuade him? What he desires that he does, for he will complete what he appoints for me, and many such things are in his mind. Therefore I am terrified at his presence, when I consider I am in dread of him. God has made my heart faint, the Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. Here ends our first reading. We read the canticle, Great and Wonderful. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds. Lord God the Almighty, just and true are your ways, a ruler of the nations, who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Our second reading, we continue to hear from the letter to the Romans, Chapter 10, verses 11 to the end. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation I will make you angry. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But of Israel, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lonely servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. So let us pray. So 
So as we gather together for our time of prayer this evening, so we bring to the Lord all those things, places and people that we carry in our hearts and minds today and wish to lay before him. For healing, for care, for peace. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that we have been able to enjoy, for the glorious sunshine and for the warmth that we have felt. We pray, Lord, for all those that we have spoken to today, for those that we've had socially distanced conversations with, those that we may have spoken to on the phone or via social media and email. We pray for the things that they have shared with us, for those things that weigh heavy in their hearts and minds today, those people that they have been taking care of and those who they are concerned for. From our prayer intention today, we pray for the cathedral, for the dean and chapter and its ministry to the diocese as the mother church. We pray for wisdom and inspiration as they respond to the changing requirements in managing this pandemic. We pray for our bishops, for Julian, Philip and Jill, for our archdeacons, Mark and David. We pray for Peter, the Dean, and for all who work at the cathedral, for those who work to look after those who are visiting for times of prayer. We pray for our parishes across the diocese and across our country as we think about how we may open our doors to people once again. We pray, Lord, for your wisdom and guidance that we may work always to keep people safe. We pray for those who are thinking about whether they will return to church. And we pray and give thanks that we are still able to use technology to keep in touch with those who stay at home. We continue to pray for our key workers, for those going out to work and those who've worked from home. We pray for those who continue to be furloughed, for those who are preparing to open their businesses and shops in the coming days. And we pray especially for those who've lost their employment or whose employment is under threat due to the pandemic. We pray for those who try to help those who've lost their employment, for charities, societies and groups who try to get them back into work. And we pray that as we move through this time of lockdown, as lockdown eases, the jobs would be available once again. We pray for our schools, for those who've been returning to school this week, and those who have continued to go to school throughout the whole time of lockdown. We pray for those who teach and those who support them, and for parents who are continuing with homeschooling. We pray for our young people, for the fact that they have missed their friends and that daily routine of life. We pray for those who have suffered with their mental health, at the loss of being able to be with other people. We continue to pray also for the NHS. We pray for our local hospitals, for those who work in them, for those who are on the front line, our doctors and nurses, and for those who work behind the scenes to support them. For ward clerks, for cleaners, for those who provide the food for porters, for those who work in other areas of the hospital, praying for our midwives, for those who work in the operating theatres. And we pray especially for our hospital chaplains, here in Blackburn for Andrew and David, and for their team as they go out to provide pastoral support across the wards. We pray also for the work of the hospice, for those who care for those in respite and for end of life care. We give thanks that they are able to care for people with dignity and respect. We pray for those who go out into the community, for district nurses and healthcare workers who provide help at home, for carers, 
for those who provide food, for those who just try to alleviate the suffering of those who are most vulnerable in our society. We pray also for our care homes and for the valuable work that they do, for staff and for residents. We pray for our GP surgeries, for the doctors, nurses and those who support them who work in those places and also for those in our pharmacies who provide us with care and medication. Lord, we thank you for all those who followed their calling in life to fulfil different roles and responsibilities, for those who have stepped up to the challenge of this time, and we pray that you would keep them safe. So we bring to you, Lord, those who are in need of your healing touch, praying for Bridget, John, Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, Morris, Margaret, Joyce and Joyce. And all those who are in our hearts and minds and in need of that healing today. We pray that they would know your presence and that you would surround them with your strength. We pray also for those who have died for those who died recently and those who died this past day. Lord, be with families and friends who mourn, for those who grieve, for those who are planning to prepare funerals. Help us to know the hope of the resurrection and the gift of eternal life. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of evening prayer, either live or a little bit later on as you've had opportunity or your time zone allows you to watch. It's been good as always to have your company. Pray that you would have a good evening, quiet evening, that the temperature drops enough for you to be able to sleep okay. It's not really ever a problem for me, I have to confess. I seem to be out of the count as soon as my head hits the pillow the last couple of nights obviously too much fresh air. Do stay safe, keep well, look after yourselves and uh, you remain as always in my prayers. Please note that there is no live streaming of morning or evening prayer tomorrow as I will be having a day off and um, I will look forward to being back with you on Saturday morning. <laughs>